Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Pastor Julia Piper, and I'm the pastor here at Juniata United Methodist Church in Altoona. And we welcome you to this time to hear God's word and apply it to our lives as we go out there and live every day according to God's promises. So as we begin our service today, we're going to talk about the anchor that keeps our ship afloat. And that anchor is Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for the power and the victory that we do have through him. But let us begin by having a word of prayer. Will you please join me? Gracious God, thank you for being the anchor to our souls. Thank you for being the source of strength each and every day in our lives. Whether we are in the midst of good times or challenging times, we know that you are with us. So hold us firm and let us be grounded and rooted in you so that we can display all your goodness to all the world around us and so that we as your people can live with your message of hope. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what I'm going to do is ask that you join me as we receive the scripture for today. Coming from the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, I'll be sharing with you verses 13 through 20. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no greater one for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you, and you will have many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves. And the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all the argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised. He confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we have been fled to hold on to the hope set before us so we may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Gracious God, let your spirit touch us in an amazing way. Let us see the hope and the power and the promise that is revealed through you. And let us go forward and share that message with the world so that all your people can be guided and held firm to your promise of love, protection, and security. In Jesus' name, amen. As I think about today's message, I'm quickly reminded of a cartoon that I used to like to watch and some of you may not remember it, but his name was Popeye the Sailor Man. And uh, he lived with an anchor tattooed on his arm. And it was tattooed on his big bicep right up here. The anchor for Popeye defined his strength. And his strength was supported that every time he had an emergency or an adventure to undertake, he would intake some cans of spinach. His strength then was transformed to give him power to overcome anyone trying to accomplish evil stunts in his life and near him. Well, as we are talking about the anchor, we recognize that the anchor indicates strength and being connected to a higher source. Let me be clear. It cannot be a hope that is given by a dose of spinach and it cannot be an emotional hope that is held with inside of us. But it must be a hope that is grounded on something. It is a willingness to trust in what we hold on to. 
That is hope. And living in the world we live in today, I wish the answers to our problems were as simple as taking some additional spinach to repair our worldly circumstances. There are times that these challenges come upon us suddenly and we don't have a whole lot of time to get ready or prepare. Other times we can be prepared. We just need to be anchored at all times. Anchored to our genuine faith in Jesus Christ. If you look at the words of Paul in Ephesians 4.14, it says, We must not longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. Let me share with you a couple of examples of how we can avoid this being tossed to and fro and getting off the pathway that God desires for us. A couple years ago, as you know, Jeff and I took a cruise. And as we took our cruise, we recognized that when leaving or entering a port on our cruise ship, you could see the buoys as they remained always above the water. The buoys were anchored down and they provided a guide for the ship so that the ship would not get off the path. And it allowed the ship to do that safely and quickly without hitting any large rocks or banks of ground that may do damage to the boat. But the buoys, they continually need to be remain grounded because a huge ship or a ferocious storm can cause some huge waves. And those buoys are tra tra tossed back and forth by the waves of the body of water. However, they remain relatively close to the ship to guide it out to the sea. As the buoys are anchored, so are ships anchored, so that they remain steady at a time of storm or chaos or when left unattended. They are held by an anchor. And an anchor is a symbol of hope for all Christians. It represents great strength and security that holds us girded and in place. Just as the anchor secures a ship, Jesus anchors and secures your soul and my soul. And Jesus wants to be our anchor in the storms of life. And he longs for us to be connected and grounded in our relationship with him. The writer of the Hebrew scripture today wants the audience, us to know, that despite times of trials and tribulation, there is a promise of Jesus, the one that is the anchor of your hope and my hope. Hope is important because we live and die as people who have hope. We live knowing God was always present in the past. We live knowing that God is with us in the present and we have a future of hope. Knowing that Jesus is holding out the best for us. And no matter what we are facing, we have the victory in Jesus Christ. As we explore the book of Hebrews, we see that the writer was sharing a testimony that would encourage the Jews who converted to Christianity. They were ready to throw in the towel. Because life in the world was becoming difficult with persecution and challenges in their lives. They were encouraged to not live in the worldly desires, but to place their hope in Christ, the gift that God has promised them to come. This is evidenced through the author writing about Abraham. God's word says when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where the forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. 
The writer of Hebrews is saying in this that we have seen God's promise come true through the promises he made to Abraham. And the writer of Hebrews is telling us we need to hold on to this. We need to believe in this. We need to be anchored in this faith that God has freely given to us. Why? Because God does not go back on God's promises. The writer of Hebrews encourages us to embrace that hope. And the writer notes that hope enters that inner sanctuary behind a curtain. You see, when the curtain was torn at the time of death of Christ, the temple was open for the priesthood of all believers to have access to God. You might say, who are all the priesthood of believers? Well, that's you and I. Therefore, the scripture gives us evidence that Christ not only died and was resurrected for all, but Christ has already gone ahead of us and given us the gift of salvation. We are to receive that. Therefore, we should have absolute hope and confidence in God's promise to us. And that confidence leads us to be people who live out our purpose in a bold kind of way. Knowing that God is holding us steady and guiding us. And that God will continue to provide and hold us in the direct pathway of the future. You see, as believers of Jesus Christ, we recognize that God is on the throne. And that Jesus Christ, the high priest, sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Therefore, Jesus Christ comes as a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek being the high priest who recognized God as the most high God. This high God has made promises, as I said earlier, to our ancestor Abraham and Sarah. And therefore, what God promises is true. If looking at the scripture through the eyes of our lives today, we recognize that the book of Hebrews encourages us just as it did many years ago for others. Let hope be the anchor for your soul. You may be like that ship that is on a journey. In fact, we are all on a journey and life is ahead of us. But my encouragement to you is to move forward, knowing that God is on your side. Let God guide each step you take, just like those buoys guide the ship. So we do not journey too far off the pathway that God has set out for us and find harm. Let God guide you through God's gentle voice, loving hands, and transforming grace. And for those who do not know about the power and about the anchor that God offers us, tell them about the hope that you have in God and share it with the world. John Maxwell says, when there is no hope in the future, there is no power in the present. And that hope is our power. So go forward and live into God's power and hope, not only today, but in the days to come, and share that hope with the world. Amen.